ਕਨੈਕਟ ਐਫਐਮ 91.5 ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੁਣ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਸਵੇਰ ਵਾਲਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੁਣ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੰਜ਼ਰਵੇਟਿਵ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਆਫ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੇ ਲੀਡਰ ਪੀਅਰ ਪੋਲੀਐਵ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਪੋਲੀਐਵ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਐ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਪੋਲੀਐਵ ਥਿਸ ਵੀਕ ਵੀਵ ਸੀਨ ਜਗਮੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਪੁਲਿੰਗ ਆਊਟ ਹਿਸ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਦੀ ਦੀ ਕੌਨਫੀਡੈਂਸ ਐਂਡ ਸਪਲਾਈ ਅਗਰੀਮੈਂਟ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਟਰਮੀਨੇਟਡ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਇਟ ਮਲਟੀਪਲ ਟਾਈਮਸ ਥੈਟ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਰਿਪਡ ਥੈਟ ਅਗਰੀਮੈਂਟ uh what's your reaction to that because it doesn't seem that he is too interested in uh, going for an election at this point it seems like another stunt uh, i will call him the stunt man uh, he says he's tearing up the agreement but he won't call an election so how are canadians ever going to vote out this costly ndp liberal coalition if we don't have an election and i've said to jagmeet singh vote with me to end the costly NDP liberal government and trigger a carbon tax election so that Canadians can vote on the NDP liberal plan to hike the carbon tax up 300% all the way to 61 cents a liter or if they want to vote uh for a common sense conservative government that will ax the tax to bring down gas heat and grocery bills you did bring this bill in the month of march as well about uh, the carbon tax do you think that this time anything changes and uh, and jagmeet singh and the ndp could vote uh, uh, alongside your party to bring the government down on the issue of the carbon tax well it's hard to say i mean so far singh has voted with justin trudeau about 3 dozen times to hike the carbon tax up 300% to 61 cents a liter has he had a sudden change of heart on the eve of an election i don't believe it but maybe the pressure from starving taxpayers who are seeing the carbon tax drive up their gas heat and grocery bills or who are losing their jobs in the trucking sector because fuel prices are too high will force sing to do a temporary flip flop but let's be honest there's only one party that will ax the carbon tax to bring down your gas heat and grocery bills to protect your job and that is the common sense conservative party mr polia there are many people who do not agree with the um, politics of jagmeet singh but some of those people are now taking an issue with the terms that you use uh, to attack mr singh when you when you call him sell out singh or stunt man singh uh do you, do you think that usage of such words dilutes the message uh for some of the people who, who for whom what you say resonates but then when you use uh, when you when you indulge in this name calling uh it um, it dilutes the message and and it reduces the impact well i don't think so look uh, the bottom line is he did sell out his voters he told them he was going to be a strong voice for workers and seniors and then he signed on to keep Justin Trudeau in power for the last 2 years doubling housing costs driving up grocery prices uh, supporting catch and release that has unleashed crime chaos drugs and disorder in our streets he did sell out our people and that's why we're saying vote for the common sense conservatives who will ax the tax build the homes fix the budget and stop the crime So do you intend to uh, still uh, use that kind of uh, wording or that kind of name calling for Jagmeet Singh because some people from within the community feel uh, that that could open up the doors to racism in other parts of the country where somebody who listens to you talk like that and associate uh, the the last name Singh with the word sell out or stunt man that could open doors to racism in in parts of the country against people in the Sikh community Oh, I know I don't see it that way. I love the Sikh community and I've been spending my uh, many many uh countless hours uh in building friendships in Gurdwaras and community halls across the country and sharing my common sense message that Sikhs share believe in, which is faith, family and freedom. And uh, that is the message I will keep delivering um in addition to holding Singh accountable for selling out the he has sold out the Sikh community actually. and he sold out our uh, voters from all different backgrounds by raising carbon taxes on the wonderful Sikh truck driving companies 
Mm. in places like Brampton, where they're now facing job losses because of a carbon tax that tr- that Singh has s- supported. He's voted for catch and release criminal justice that has caused crime in communities uh, and law abiding patriotic Sikhs are suffering the consequences of these policies. Uh, they And so I think he should stand up for the people rather than standing it with Justin Trudeau. And uh, we, that's what we're, we're the message I will bring forward as we move towards the carbon tax election. Mm. Mr. Boliev, you've been talking about the catch and release system uh, for the last good part of the last two, two and a half years, ever since you've become the leader. Uh, we had this horrific incident in Vancouver a day before yesterday where another repeat offender uh, killed one person, severed one person's hand. Um, and despite the fact that the federal government made changes to the criminal code and the bail reform, we still have these repeat offenders getting uh, uh, probation and coming out on probation. Uh, What still needs to be changed with the criminal code? Because the federal government says that they've done their part and now it's up to the provinces uh, and and the provincial courts to implement that change in the law. No, they haven't done anything. What they have done, actually, is caused the problem in the first place with Bill C-75, the catch and release bail law, and they have not repealed that law. What we need to do is repeal the entire catch and release system that Trudeau and the NDP passed into law in Bill C-75, C-83, and C-5. Those bills allow people to be automatically released on bail within minutes of their most recent arrest, even if they have a rap sheet of 50 or 60 prior convictions. Mm. What I'm saying is we need a new law that makes rampant offenders ineligible for bail, house arrest, parole, or probation. It should be jail, not bail, jail, not bail for rampant career criminals. Uh, secondly, we need to secure the borders. One, right now, only 1% of shipping containers are inspected, and that is allowing for cars to go out and drugs and guns to come in. I want high-powered scanners to, sk- to, to look into those containers. And finally, we need to ban the hard drugs, shut down these uh, taxpayer-funded opioid programs that mm-hmm. Trudeau and the NDP have pushed. Uh, less drugs, less crime, and bring home safety to our community. Uh, Mr. Pauliev, now it seems that the federal government is uh, willing to relook at the immigration numbers. Some caps have been placed on the numbers of international students. There are some changes being made to the temporary foreign worker program. Your comment on that, please. Look, they, they created the mess. Uh, Canada had the best immigration system in the world for over 150 years. That's how my grandfather came from Ireland. That's how my wife came from Venezuela as a refugee. Mm. Um, And so we love immigration, but Trudeau has caused total chaos in our system. He has uh, caused a population growth that is three times faster than our housing stock grows. So we're adding people three times faster than we add homes. We're adding the equivalent of PEI every month. Mm. We're adding Manitoba every year to our population. And there, much of this is through fraudulent use of the international student and temporary foreign worker programs, um, where uh, greedy corporations are uh, uh, taking advantage of poor uh, people coming from low uh, from poor countries to take low wage jobs and drive down the wages and employment of Canadians. So I'm going to get back to the common sense system we had before Trudeau where we, yes, we bring in people, we unite mm-hmm. families, we fill real job vacancies that we can't fill with Canadians. And the students who come should have to prove that they have a real admissions letter from a real university, that they have a home, and they have enough money to pay their bills uh, without working 40 hours a week. So that's how we're going to bring home the best immigration system in the world. Our permanent residency target numbers for this year is 485,000 and then 500,000 uh, 500, people for each of the next two years. Do you have a number in mind as to how many people we should accept every year uh, uh, on the basis of permanent residency? At the end of the day, I, I think we need is to combine the permanent and, ter- and temporary number to come up with a, a growth rate in our population that we can absorb. Um, and a human being is a human being. If you're, whether you're here temporarily or permanently, you'll need a place to live. Mm-hmm. 
you'll need a job and an income. You potentially need a doctor. So what I'm proposing is a mathematical formula that ensures that our availability of health care jobs and housing always grows faster than our population. Mm. Uh, so, Mr. for example, mm-hmm. if our population grows by, if our, if our housing stock grows by 1.4%, well, then we cannot grow our population by faster than 1.4%. Otherwise, we'll contribute to the housing deficit. Mm. So let's cap the population growth below the growth in the housing stock. Mm. Mr. Pauli, have last question. We've uh, seen this major shakeup in the British Columbia politics last week when BC United has now withdrawn all its candidates. And now BC Conservatives, the, the, the local party here, the provincial party, uh, already had a lot of momentum behind them and some credit that momentum to the federal momentum, your momentum, which is rubbing off onto the BC Conservatives. Uh, what would you like to say about the state of BC politics now, uh, at, this, at this juncture when we are about six weeks away from an election? Well, two things. We In B.C., they have the combination of the NDP provincially and the Liberals federally. And what has it brought? The most expensive real estate in the world. Uh, they have uh, here in Vancouver, it's the third most expensive housing market on planet Earth, only behind Hong Kong and I think Sydney, Australia. Hmm. Um, and uh, rampant crime, the highest drug overdose rates in the world. And, um, of course, uh, a terrible, brutal carbon tax that has the highest gas prices in North America. That's what you get when you vote NDP and Liberal. Uh, now we have a chance for two common sense governments that will ax the carbon tax, mm. build the homes and not the bureaucracy, fix the budget to stop inflation and interest rate hikes and stop the crime with jail, not bail, treatment, not drugs and secure borders. Uh, that is a common sense future all British Columbians and Canadians can embrace. Mr. Pauliev, thank you so much for your time this morning and have a nice day. Thank you. Great to be with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.